apply parking brake. Open the hood and the hatch of the vehicle. Disconnect the negative battery cable. Prepare a protective surface to place all components on. On the passenger's side front seat, remove the trim panels covering the seat bolts. Slide the seat forward and remove the trim panels covering the seat bolts on the rear side of the seat. Locate the slots in the trim covers and pry them off using the forked end of your trim tool. Using a socket wrench, remove the four 14mm seat bolts. Tilt the seat towards the rear of the vehicle. Disconnect the three factory connectors and cable mounting clips underneath the seat. Ensure that your negative battery terminal is disconnected before performing this step. Remove connector housings from the assembly to allow clear workspace for installing amplifier mounting bracket. Apply provided foam tape to potential contact points of the amplifier and under seat springs to emit any possible rattles. Position the amplifier assembly so that the rear bracket hooks on the rearmost spring and the front threaded rivet nut lines up to the mounting opening of the under seat front frame. Use the provided 10mm bolt to secure the amplifier bracket assembly to the under seat frame. The use of a universal joint socket can make threading the bolt easier based on the location, though it's not required. Return the three factory connector housings, connectors, and cable mounting clips to their original factory locations. The amplifier connector receptacles will face the passenger side of the vehicle. Quick sync wire and harness installation. Remove the passenger side front threshold lifting straight up and disengaging all factory clips. Remove the passenger side kick panel by unscrewing the black locking tab counterclockwise and gently pulling the panel away. Check for factory snaps that may not have come off with the panel. Reinsert to panel if applicable. Remove the passenger side rear threshold by pulling up in an upward motion. Loosen the seat belt trim weather stripping by hand carefully in an outward direction on both the front and rear passenger side thresholds. Remove the lower seat belt mounting bolt by hand or with a panel tool and remove the lower seat belt mounting 14mm bolt. Disengage passenger side seat belt trim panel by pulling directly towards you from the top portion of the panel and working your way down, disengaging the clip from behind. Reinsert any snaps to the panel if applicable. You have now prepared the run for the quick sync wiring harness to connect to the amplifier, ground location, radio power wire, and sub umbilicals. Unfasten the gray and white plastic carpet clips along the threshold area and lift carpet edge to expose cable route. Run the quick sync wiring harness amplifier connectors and ground underneath the carpet opening from the front passenger side threshold to the passenger side opening under the seat. Locate the ground location underneath the carpet Install the harness ground with the provided 10mm bolt and tighten. Plug the white and gray 22 pin connectors from the quick sync wiring harness into their designated receptacles on the DSP amplifier. The white connector will be towards the rear of the vehicle and the gray towards the front. You'll want to ensure that the quick sync wiring harness has enough slack so that the cable is in a rested position when the seat is pushed all the way back. Zip tie is necessary for a clean look. Route the radio and power side of the harness alongside the passenger side threshold towards the kick panel re-engaging the white and gray plastic clips along the way. Leave this portion of the wiring harness in the kick panel floor area for the time being. Run the subwoofer umbilical cable alongside the passenger side threshold towards the rear of the truck behind any factory wire in the seat belt panel area. Disengage the white plastic clips along the route. Use cable ties as necessary. Re-engage clips and leave this portion of the harness in the passenger rear seat floor area for the time being. Reinstall passenger side seat belt trim, weather stripping, seat belt bolt, and cover in reverse order. Return seat back in place and confirm that the seat bolts are lining up. Tighten the seat bolts by hand at first to ensure proper alignment. If there is too much resistance, start over and double check alignment. Finish tightening all four seat belt bolts using the 14mm socket and ratchet. Return seat bolt trim panels to their original locations. Behind the radio. Apply masking tape to bottom interior console locations at radio trim panel corners to prevent any potential scuffing. Remove radio trim panel by inserting a plastic trim tool to loosen the bottom corner edge and carefully pry away by hand. This will loosen complete bezel assembly, including the climate controls. Once loosened, carefully disengage the cable clip and factory connector, allowing you to remove the assembly completely. 
Lay down a protective blanket over the shift control area. Using a 10 mm socket wrench, remove the four bolts holding the radio in place. Remove radio trim panel by gripping the top and bottom edge and carefully prying away by hand. Take note of the factory connector orientation. Disconnect connectors and antenna lead and remove radio and store safely. Remove the under glove box panel by pulling directly down and away. Run the passenger side of the quick sync wire and harness entering the channel along the side of the glove box to above the glove box assembly. From the side kick panel area, pass the radio connectors up to the channel to the space above the glove box. In the radio cavity, reach in the channel above the glove box and pull the harness through. Run neatly and out of the way and use cable ties as necessary. Connect the factory 10 pin and 6 pin connectors to the quick sync wiring harness and then connect the quick sync wiring harness 10 pin and 6 pin connectors to their designated locations in the radio. Reinstall all connectors, radio assembly, the four 10 mm bolts, radio trim panel, and all connections related to the climate control back in reverse order. Power wire installation. Under the hood on the passenger side of the vehicle, locate the top grommet on the passenger side of the firewall directly to the left of the main factory wiring. Identify the unused nipple and slice the tip to create an opening for the power wire. For best results, insert a 10 inch wire, cable tie, or wire rod through the grommet from under the hood and attach power wire to the wire or cable tie from the kick panel area. Run the length of the wire through the grommet. Install supplied high temperature corrugated split loom to cover the power wires and insulate against extreme temperatures under the hood. Run the loomed power wire neatly towards the battery, secure using cable ties as necessary. Connect the power wire to the fuse holder assembly, inserting the 12 gauge stripped power wire into the yellow butt connector and crimp. Apply heat to activate the solder and heat shrink insulator for the best connection possible. Remove the 12 mm bolt from the top of the battery's positive terminal. Install the ring terminal of the fuse holder lead. Reinstall the 12 mm bolt and tighten. Do not install fuse at this time. Back in the vehicle, reinstall the under glove box panel and the kick panel. Sub umbilical installation. Fold the rear passenger seat forward. Disengage the two 10 mm bolts securing the rear cargo area threshold. Once bolts are loosened, assembly will pull straight up by disengaging the two yellow panel clips. Disengage any clips that remain in the original mounting point and return to panel. Run the sub umbilical cable underneath the carpet opening from the rear passenger side threshold to the opening where the rear cargo threshold was. Run all cable slack through and position cables on the passenger side of threshold mounting points. Using the panel tool, tuck the carpet under the rear seat side panel if loosened. Run cable from the passenger side to the driver's side under the carpet along the channel between the rear seat and the cargo area. Run the cable under the driver's side rear side panel to the far rear cargo area. Open the two plastic trim covers on the driver's side rear side panel and remove the 10 mm bolts. Disengage the rear cargo net hook to remove the number two Phillips screw. Remove the two floor screw locations securing the side panel in place. Using a pick tool, remove the trim panel of the floor cargo net hook, exposing the 10 mm bolt. Remove the 10 mm bolt and hook assembly. 
subwoofer connectors will run through this cavity. With the rear side panel loosened, run the subwoofer cable behind the side panel to the floor hook assembly opening. Run cable neatly and out of the way, use cable ties as necessary. Reinstall side panel, cargo threshold, and all corresponding hardware. Reinstall passenger side rear threshold panel. Subwoofer system installation. Using the provided alcohol wipes, prepare the cargo floor beneath the subwoofer mounting location. Connect the subwoofer umbilical cables to the OEM Audio Plus subwoofer system. Connectors are interchangeable and can be plugged in either order. Remove adhesive from provided industrial hook and loop strips on undercarriage of subwoofer assembly. Slide subwoofer system into the floor and panel cavity until it rests in place. Subwoofer will rest completely flush, corner mounted against the driver's side of the vehicle. Front dash tweeter installation. Using a picker panel tool, carefully lift the dash speaker grill up and out of position. Remove the two 10 mm bolts holding the factory speaker in place and remove the speaker. Disconnect the factory dash speaker. Position the OEM Audio Plus 1 inch soft dome tweeter and reinstall the dash speaker connector. Mount the speaker using the original 10 mm bolts. Reinstall the dash speaker grill and repeat this process for the other side of the vehicle. Front speaker installation. Use the panel tool to remove the covers behind the interior door latch directly beneath the grab handle. In the top corner of the grab handle. Remove the three number two Phillips screws from these locations. Remove the A-pillar by pulling straight and away from the door. Use a panel tool or your hands to disengage the clips behind the door panel one at a time. Start at the bottom, then the sides, and finish at the top. Use gentle force to remove the door panel, pulling directly away from the door assembly. Disengage the light assembly from the panel. Use a panel tool to remove the assembly, then disengage the connector. Remove the door latch assembly from the door panel by unsnapping and lifting the door latch connectors. The connectors need to be reassembled in the same orientation, white on top, green on bottom. Disconnect the window door lock control connectors from the panel. Use a pick tool or precision screwdriver if needed to release the connector. Remove the four 10mm bolts holding the factory speaker in place, disconnect the connector, and remove the speaker. Mount the OEM Audio Plus 6x9 woofer by using the four 10mm bolts and reinstall the 6x9 connector. Reassemble the door in reverse order, taking time to ensure all connectors are engaged. Repeat the process for the other side of the vehicle. Rear door speaker installation. Note, rear door disassembly is near identical to the front door process. Remove the three 10 mm bolts holding the factory six and a half inch speaker in place and remove the speaker. Mount the 6.5 inch OEM Audio Plus coaxial speaker by using the original three 10mm bolts and reinstall the speaker connector. Reassemble door in reverse order, taking time to ensure all clips are engaged. Repeat this process for the other side of the vehicle. Cargo hatch speaker installation. With the hatch open, remove the 10 mm bolt from the grab strap. Disengage the two hatch light assemblies from the panel. 
Use a panel tool to remove the assembly, then disengage the connectors. Use gentle force to remove the hatch panel. Start at the bottom, then the sides, and finish at the top. Remove the three 10mm bolts holding the factory speaker in place. Disconnect the factory connector and remove the speaker. Mount the 6.5 inch OEM Audio Plus coaxial speaker by using the three 10mm bolts and reinstalling the speaker connector. Repeat this process for the other side of the cargo hatch. Re-engage the hatch panel in reverse order, taking time to ensure all clips are engaged and connectors are connected. Failure to securely reinstall panel may result in rattles. Reconnect light assemblies and reinstall grab strap. Under the hood, install the provided 30 amp fuse. Reconnect the battery and close the hood. This concludes the OEM Audio Plus Reference 450Q installation for the Toyota 4Runner. Start your engine, turn on your radio, and enjoy.